Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I have got a very special video. In today's video, we're going to be checking out this F7 DJI capable 100 amp stack. It's an F7 flight controller, 100 amp ESE, all wrapped up into one little stack, and it's only about 70 bucks. Darwin FPV sent me this, well, shout out, because they sent me a couple other things, but I'm excited to check this thing out and find out if it should go on your next build. Let's go! Uh All right, pilots, let's go ahead and crack this puppy open, but before we do, I do want to mention that it does show right here on the package 100 amps, and why would they write that on the package if it wasn't true? All right, cracking this thing open, if I open the top right away, you see we've got a sticker. Look at that beauty. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, hold on now. Don't be holding out on me. I'm going to set that to the side, and let's just take a look inside real quick, see what it comes with. We've got our foam, sticker, and then little cover. Okay. So that's just going to be something that you can actually, because you see that, that's a bare stack. So if you wanted to lay the bare stack down without getting continuity, you would stick that to that, and then you can place that flat on the carbon and not have any continuity issues. So that's very nice. So you've got a little package. Inside, you've got a capacitor. I would strongly recommend using the capacitor. So we've got some rubber grommets there. I want you to take note. These are not regular rubber grommets. And we're going to go over why not. But you've got an XT60. You've got some stack mounting screws. Then they went and did you the solid. They gave you a little bit of heat shrink so you can slide that over and then you can heat it up and now you've got your XT60 built. All right, silicone wire, yes it is. You've got a few connectors, one, two, You've got a bare one with, still has the actual jacks on the end, but no, no, nowhere to solder, but you could just snip those off if you want to. And then, looks like we have a DJI plug. Oh, oh. So if you're running DJI, you go ahead and you take this, you stick it in the back of your DJI, you're going to take this, and it's pretty dummy proof, because guess what? It doesn't fit here, okay? It doesn't fit here. It doesn't fit here, but it does fit here. We do have a type C connector. The stack comes ready to go, but this is actually concerning me because in this stack, you'll see we go from ESE to plastic stack spacer directly to the flight controller, directly to a nylon nut. Let's just think out loud here. Where is the grommets? Where do I soft mount something that has to be soft mounted, okay? It's not. Well, that's where these come into play. They did give you grommets. If you'll notice, they are not shaped in a form factor that would fit through the flight controller's hole and then grip out the sides that you slide on top of the screws. This is different. You will have to have space to slide this entire grommet over the screw and then the entire stack on top of that. Now, once I put this on a flight controller and take it out for a spin, do a little testing, I'll be able to let you know how that holds up. But in my mind, it seems okay. So I don't think we have a problem there. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in real quick. I'm gonna pop off these top screws. Let's go ahead and see how this goes because I'm kind of tugging a little bit and it's not wanting to come apart. So that means there's something more holding this together. Is that, is there another? Oh shoot, oh shoot. There's another, is that another board? It's connected, is it connected? Okay, so I see it right here. You'll see where they've actually, this this is a whole nother board placed on top and then they've tack welded it right here. It's soldered to the vias on the side and you've got your battery, uh, motors, current ground and a UART right here, an RX-6 and that is what's holding this bottom thin board 
to this top board here. So that's kind of interesting. And then what we've got is something that most guys are against. Take a look. We've actually got a connector. Now, this is not your traditional like five pin connector where you put it together and you do a little moving and it gets all loose on you. That's not what we got here. As much as I want to criticize this, I mean, this is not that. But you can see there's your male, there's your female. I mean, that is that is actually quite gorgeous. And if you have these two mounted together as tightly as it was, it ain't going to move. It ain't going to come apart. You're not self, self mounting in between. You really shouldn't even be separating this at all. I, I'm going to go ahead and say that now. If you bought this, you really have no reason to separate this except I just spotted a couple more pads right here. So if you're trying to get to motors five, six, seven, or eight, other than that, you should not be separating this. Uh, and if you are, you're going to crack them apart. You're going to solder up some leads, hang them out the back, and then you're going to put this back together. This flight controller and ESC combo can do up to eight motors. It's got five UARTs and it is DJI capable. I do want to throw that out there. I'm going to go ahead and say we are lacking a little bit of filtering. There's not much capacitance here, but like I said, they did throw in a capacitor. If you solder that up, you should be okay. And then right here, we've got a shunt resistor. That's how we know we're going to have current available to us. And then on the bottom, it looks like they just went ahead and passed a ton of metal through this thing. Boom, 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 boom. And you may think like, well, they just did that for looks, or maybe they were being cheap, or maybe they weren't being cheap, so they put extra. No, no, no. This is actually to help current flow through the board more freely. All right, so right here, you've got your four different connectors, okay? The beauty in this is DJI, but if you're not running DJI, okay? Now, we're going to go over why this is DJI cap capable, because it's not just about plug and play. That's plug and play DJI capable, but it's not actually DJI capable, right? Well, not for this board. This board actually is DJI capable because we have an onboard 10 volt BEC, B-E-C, battery eliminating circuit. You can plug and play your DJI, you can plug and play your RXSR or your Crossfire Nano. You can plug and play your camera and you can plug and play your VTX. So you don't have to get all crazy with the soldering. If you're one of those kind of guys that just likes to set up your connectors, boom, 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 I'm going to go. All right, so there is a nice little overview of the board. You know what to expect, what does it come with, blage, blage. But let's go ahead and dive a little deeper. Let's jump into the scope. All right, so diving in, you can see we've got some beautiful MOSFETs here. They're absolutely gorgeous. There's motor one. I think motor two's up here. Motor four and three. And you'll solder them up just like that. One, two, three. If you need to for any reason, if you spin the stack in any orientation outside of the arrow that's given, um, I do have a video on how to remap your motors. I'll put a link down in the video description for you so you can check that out. All right, so this is what I wanted to look at. Look at this connector. I mean, that right there is is just screaming absolute beauty. I mean, I, okay, fine. You don't you don't need it, and you're probably better off without it. But like we discussed, if you were to sandwich stack and flight controller together, uh, go ahead and take a look at the male portion of this. I mean, look at that. I don't see any reason why you would have issues with this. I mean, even a really hard crash. I mean, you have them locked together on all four corners with bolts. If you are not separating these, you should have zero issues. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Fuck, who knows? You've got a ton of pins here, so I can see like actual room to get a ton of stuff up to your flight controller without a bunch of wiring, without a wiring harness. I mean, you're probably going to break off an edge connector, something like this, way before you're going to break this guy off, especially if you have the stack connected together like you're supposed to. Uh, right here is your actual pinout battery motor one motor two motor three motor four current we talked about current oh look there's a little hair uh we talked about current ground and a uart 
or we should just go ahead and say, what is it, RX-6. Uh, we talked about your current, and that is only available due to these guys right here actually pulling up the reading for us, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and slide this aside, and let's focus a little bit more on the actual flight controller itself. We can go over wiring too, but I do want to point out the obvious, okay? So what we've got here, if you're looking, is right here, this guy, okay? Don't judge my ugly circle. That guy right there is your AT7456E. That is a Betaflight OSD chip. You might have been concerned when I said that this was DJI compatible, but if you're not running DJI, you do not have to worry, all right, because you got everything you need there. And just to flip back to this board, uh, this side of the board just for a second, uh, it, you might not have noticed, but let me go ahead real quick. I just want to point this out. So, uh, and th this is not actually normal. This is, this is actually quite creative. But on this board, you'll notice, here we go, we've got MOSFET, 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 capacitor, capacitor, MOSFET, MOSFET, I mean, where is the MCU, right? In the instructions, we saw that this is running an F FO5, but yet, there's no MCU. So if I go ahead and I look on the bottom of the flight controller where they have tacked this board together, which you can see is soldered up right here. Look at that. And this board here, there you go. You've got your F405 and then you've got your BB2 chip. All right, so that is a very interesting way to put this together. Like, okay, hold on. Let's separate the ESE. We'll make it two. We'll put half of it up under the flight controller. I mean, that's it's just pretty cool. It's pretty cool that they did that. Let's get back to work. All right, so see this arrow right here. This arrow is the arrow in which the direction of where you'll point your flight controller. Make sure you do that, all right? Uh, what else we got? Oh, looky here. What is that, pilots? That is a wind bond chip. That is your onboard flash. So although you're getting 100 amps, you're getting DJI capable, you've got a 10 volt back, 5 volt back, I mean, you've got all this stuff, and still they managed to go ahead and squeeze on for us a uh, place to have onboard flash. If you're not a black boxer, you may not use it, but if you want to use it, you got it. There it is. All right, 5 volts and buzzer ground. That is if you want to go ahead and solder up a buzzer. But if you have a GPS, you'd go here, here, ground, and power, okay? And then you'll need a UART as well. This depends on what type of GPS that you have. All right, over here, you've got a RGB. Come on, guys, you know what that is. That's your LED, L-E-D, RGB, red, green, blue. What else we got? We've got uh, RSSI 3.3 and a UART 2. Let's go over the elephant in the room. Everybody probably wants to know what is a PC9 pad? What would I do with a PC9 pad? Okay, well, that pad is actually for a Bluetooth module. If you were gonna solder it up, you would go ahead and run your switch, then you would run your TX and your RX. You know, you receive your transmit. PC9 though, for whatever reason, they decided to pull that name from the actual name of what that pin is called. PC9, PB9, PA9, these are names of pins. So if I come over here to the MCU, you don't know what they are unless you pull up the actual data sheet. But for example, this may be PC9, and this is gonna be PC10, and this is gonna be PC11 like that. And rather than naming that pad something different, they pulled the name of the actual pin and they just wrote it next to the pad, no big deal. And if you take a look, they did that with this pad too. And I don't know, this pad may be for testing. It may actually be PA4 for whatever reason. All right, moving right along, we've got a MPU 6000 right here. It is an InVeSense, okay? InVeSense. Indecence, I don't know. That's the manufacturer, it sounds cool, I like it, cool name, guys. All right, so soldering up, you'll see right here is where you would connect your camera. So check this out, this is your video in, you've got your ground, and then you've got your five volts to power your camera. Some cameras require battery volt, well not battery voltage, but they require more than five volts, seven, nine, whatever. If that's the case, you'll connect your camera right here, no harm, no foul. But of course, you want to know, Drain Man, PA1, 
<laughs> Again, another one of the names they're using right off the pin. I don't know why, but PA1 is actually going to be used for camera control. All right, moving right along. Here is your pinout for your ESC. If for whatever reason uh, you didn't have an ESC connected or half of it secretly soldered to the bottom, you may want to, you may need to solder up a uh, battery, motor one, motor two, motor three motor of R, you're going to need your current if you want it, you don't have to have it, and then your ground. All right, so let's say you're not running DJI. Well, guess what? You'll connect your video in, you'll connect your power, 10 volts right there, you'll connect your ground, and then you've got smart audio right here. No worries, unless you're running like a Unify V3, and you can only handle 5 volts, but other than that, that's where you'll connect your VTX right there. That's pretty much all of the features of the board. There's one more thing that I did notice that I think is super, super awesome. And if you didn't know any better, you wouldn't know. But these pads right here, these 4.5s, they are just 5 volt pads. But they're labeled that way for a reason. And I actually want to show this to you. Let me go ahead and kick on my multimeter. You guys are going to like this. Check this out. You ready for this? Let's go ahead and turn on my multimeter. All right. So there's my multimeter live. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just my type C connector and I'm going to go ahead and plug in and you're going to see it power up. You see a little red LED right there that lets you know that this board is on and watch this guys. You guys are going to like this. All right. So now generally speaking, if I power up this board by USB, nothing will be live. Nothing. I mean, the flight controller, the MCU will turn on, the regulator will turn on, my 3.3 volt rail will be live, but that's it. Not with this board. And this is actually kind of an old school thing. I feel like older boards back in the day kind of had this feature more than now. Nobody really does it, but watch this. And I'm going to show it to you by proving it to you by going, I'm going to go here to this ground pad right here, okay? And I'm blocking it, but right next to it, you'll see there's a five volt pad. Watch this, look, nothing, nothing, 0 0.32, nothing, that's nothing. Watch this though, if I stay on that ground and I jump over here to this 4.5, oh my God, five volts. Dre, man, you're, you're telling me that right now by USB, you are powered up five volts. And the same is true for this guy. So that is, you know, and it's not a big deal. It's just nice that they did that. So if you've got a GPS that you're trying to set up and work on, if you've got a receiver, you know, Crossfire Nano, FR Sky, RXSR, whatever, that you want to work on, you know, you want to set up your channels, your, your, your switches, whatever, and you don't want to have to sit there with your quad powered up, it's a nice touch. I personally like it. Now, I haven't put it together. I haven't wired it up. I haven't flown it, so I can't tell you how it flies. But let me know down in the comments if you're interested in having me do that, and then you can know how this thing does in the air. Maybe, just maybe, I'll strap it to a 2800 KV, and we'll see how many amps this thing can really hold. Who wants that? Come on, let me know. And that's going to do it for the Darwin 007 stack. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I will see you on the next one.